Across the world, some camps are small and informal, others are large and structured. But every camp greets campers to their site, provides shelter, food service, leadership and program. The ICF Camp Study Tour videos attempt to capture the common elements of all camps, as well as the differences that leadership, philosophy, geography and culture bring to the world of camping. Today our ICF Camp Study Tour is going to Spain. The butterfly is flying to English summer and Carolina Flykes Wright is with us now. Hola Carolina. Hola, buenas tardes. Great nice to see you. you. It isn't quite the same as being with you at the International Camping Congress. Many of us were there and many of us have fond memories of, uh, of all of your hospitality. That's right. Uh, it was a, a nice, nice uh, few days to meet uh, some of you. And we really enjoyed organizing it and meeting so many colleagues from the camp business and camp area. So the the English region. summer. Right. Let's learn a little bit more. I, I know it reaches back to your parents and, and what, 1980 or so. Maybe just a quick summary of the places and the things that you've done there. This is a family-run business. My siblings, Jordi and Felipe, we're all in the business. My mother used to teach English at home, private classes to them. And my dad, he had a hotel chain. We put those two knowledges together and we started with the, the first camp. We used to spend our summer holidays in that first camp, which was like a second home. And that was in Baiclara. And because my dad was in the hotel business, every time uh, he heard my mom saying, it is full, it is full, he started looking for a second center. That was Poblet. It was a hotel which was abandoned for about eight years. And we took over, we renovated everything, and we had classes, the sports facilities and so on, because it was a hotel with a lot of land. And then the third one uh, was up in Prades, and that was a chicken farm that my dad came home one day and said, I've bought a farm. This is the biggest one. Prades uh, has 240 beds for the children, so it, it's our biggest center. Back to the hotels themselves. We aren't talking about the, you know, a multi-story Radisson hotel. It's a, they would be more like a boutique hotel in, in a rural area of Tarragona. Yes, uh, rural places. They right. are all in the province of Tarragona. Tamarit is down near the coast, eight kilometers from Tarragona. Then we have the other three up in the mountains, which are 15 minutes or 20 minutes apart from each other. Because one of the things that my dad had in mind was to make sure that the, the camps were all within, you know, a reasonable distance because we run it amongst ourselves. So if we needed any help, we could go from one place to the other. And so the camps have evolved to partner a summer experience or a camp-like experience with the English language uh, instruction. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? How did that work? At first, it was mainly English. In the afternoons, we just look after the children, gave them some activities to do, but nothing really organized. And it wasn't until my brothers and I went to uh, the States and worked in different camps. My brothers, both of them worked in Camp Stewart, uh, in Kerrville near San Antonio. And, the, and I worked in a camp called Camp Mystic. And that's where we got the ideas on how to organize as an American style camp. So in a typical camp, would you have a, a group of staff that are the, the recreational staff and a group that is the Correct. instructional staff? We have the English team, English native teachers, who teach all the uh, four hours a day. The groups are divided into 10 to 12 students per class, and they're divided by levels and ages. And then uh, while the teachers are teaching, we have another team, which is the recreational team, or call them the counselors. They are the ones who are going to be looking after the children. So we have the two teams. While one team is looking, is in charge of the children, 
teaching uh, the lessons. The other part is preparing for the afternoon uh, activities, sports, uh, handcrafts, clubs, also cultural activities and ecological sustainability and so on. Teachers are teaching in the morning and also in the afternoon. Okay. And the counselors are also looking after the children in the morning and in the afternoon, but different groups. The main responsibility relies on the counselors. They are the ones who are going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with their group of students. These students are their cabin students. We don't have cabins, we have bedrooms. But then we also have the sports counselor, and they're the leaders during the activity. You mentioned also that those counselors had some special training. Is that training that you do, or is it done by an external organization? Uh, what certification do they receive? They can receive the training in two different ways. One is they go to a specialized school where they train them to be counselors, and then they do the, the official certificate. And then we also have our own school. Our own school is only for ex-students, children who are 17 and 18 years old. They do a training with us during two summers. They have to do a total of six weeks. They receive theory and practice training. And then when they finish, they have to do one week intensive course, which is done by the teachers, uh, official teachers from the government. Once they finish the learning process, they have to prepare a project and present it. There must be programs that relate to vacation periods, and then do you have programs that that service schools or things through the through the year? What does a year of English summer look like? The name of the company comes after that, so it's English summer because at first it was only during the summer to make sure that we make the most of the premises. We started organizing school camps, so this program runs from. September, October, November, and then we have the following season, which is the spring season, and it's March, April, May, and June. So what do the school groups do? They come here for one, two, or three days, and they do activities which are related in some way to the curriculum that they are following at school. And then on top of that, we also have on the weekends, families who come and stay with us or organizations like, I don't know, a music school who brings all the students and they do activities in on the weekend. Or we even organize weddings and all sorts of events, uh, team building events for companies. And then we have two or three months when we redo, if we have to paint the, you know, maintain the premises. So you have four different sites. What do your staff teams look like and, and the supervision and administration of those teams? Uh, so we have the main offices, accountancy, information and booking, marketing and publicity. All that is running throughout the year. And then we have the seasonal staff, which is uh, the maximum nine months. And these are the cleaning staff, the cooks, the maintenance, secretaries, camp directors, and the rest of the team, coordinators and counselors. Summer season, the counselors stay for a minimum of a week, or they do two, three, four, even the whole summer. But during the school season, uh, we can have staff in peak times, staff that come only for one day. So it is very flexible. Sometimes we have peaks with maybe 600 people working for us, and then it might go down to 100. So it all depends on how many people are staying. You must have a long roster of people you can contact and, and recruit, yes. is that right? My dad uh, was always making fun of this because he said, are you sure you don't stack them in a, in the fridge or something? Because how do you organize it to make sure that you have extra people when you need them? No, We know that the counselors are going to be with us while they're maybe studying at university and maybe the few, first few years, because once they start working as doctors or uh, architects or whatever they are studying, they are not going to come back. Although we do have staff who come back when they have their holidays. So like they're working all year round in another job and then they come with us for two weeks. But yes, the, the amount of staff 
especially when in peak season, it is very challenging. <laughs> How do you and your brothers divide the administration and over and supervision? Many times people say, how come you never argue with your brothers? And I think it's because we all do different things. For example, my eldest brother is in charge of finances. My eldest brother is Jordi. Then we have Felipe, who's in charge of all the selling side of the program and organization of the activities, uh, all the staff. I'm in charge of the English side of the program and the teachers. We have meetings almost every day, but we do have a lot of staff and they're very well trained in order to get things done properly. The other thing that impressed me was uh, your readiness to embrace uh, technology in order to still have the, the human connection, but the technical connection as well. We have one application which is connected to our own database and we do all the bookings through them. And we open like a little uh, account for each student and any expenses that they have. Say, for example, they've lost their toothbrush and we need to buy a new one. So all these expenses are now done through an app and they have a bracelet. So we scan the bracelet and it automatically dis deduces from the deposit that they have. And this uh, bracelet also opens the doors. The bracelet, depending on if you're a student or a counselor or a director, it will allow you to go through different doors. So it depends on what you need. It, it, will, be, uh, it will allow you to open one door or the other. But they also have uh, lists. So, for example, if you're going on the bus on an excursion to Porta Aventura, the amusement park, you can check them in and check them out so you know exactly who's there. With the bracelet, we can also check if uh, any student who has any allergies has gone through the canteen and collected their specific diet, uh, the dish that they have to have. to have. So it does many things, uh, this bracelet. For the kitchen staff, for checking the temperature of the fridges, checking the temperature of the food, the oven, and so on. And this, they do it with a tablet that we have, uh, and they scan different QRs. And it also uh, helps you with ordering directly the food. We exactly. also have another application because we need the people to sign when they arrive and when they leave or when they have a break. Uh, so this is done also through another app. They also get their pay slips on this app. They get any documents that they need to sign. And this has saved a lot of time and paperwork to the person in charge of personnel. Tell us about, about your market. Are they coming from Tarragona? Are they coming from Barcelona? Are they coming from uh, other, other countries? Our main provinces are Barcelona and Tarragona, city and province. But we have many from the islands, Balearic Islands, like Ibiza, Mallorca. They fly in. And then thanks to internet, we also publish on the internet and we get people from all over Spain. We also have delegates or agents from different parts of the world who send us students. But if we talk about percentages, I think we can say that 95% are from Spain and the other 5% is from the rest of the world. We also have a program for learning Spanish. So if they have a group, if they send a group, instead of going to English lessons, they go, they have a Spanish teacher who teach them Spanish, but then they do the rest of activities all together with the rest of the students. Spanish summer. Spanish summer. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are from 1980, what, 20, 24, 25 years. Are you alone in developing of camping or are there others that are have done more or less the same thing? We have language camps like ours. So they teach English or in the south of Spain, there's a few who teach Spanish mainly and they get students from international uh, students from different countries. Then we have all these sports camps, music camps. So we have all sorts of different camps, especially in, in Catalonia and in the north of Spain. There's a lot of history. There, there used to be buildings more like boarding school type of uh, camp. Big bedrooms with maybe 10 beds. So the style has been changing because of the uh, demand. Uh, they want now bedrooms with a smaller amount of students, with even, uh, you know, and sweet bathrooms. And before it, everything was like shared showers and shared uh, toilets, but 
things are improving now, and we've noticed this in the past maybe 15 years or 20 years. The quality of some of the camps all around Spain, uh, you know, it, it's quite high. Uh, I'm anxious to go on a tour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I visited all four of your camps, and uh, it will be great to see some of these things again. So what does a, an arrival day in the summer look like? Two or three days before they arrive, we send them a Zoom, well, a Teams link, and we do a tutorial before they arrive. This helps them break the ice because when they arrive, they recognize the face of the, the, the person who's going to be looking after them. Parents are more relaxed because they've met the person who's going to be looking after them. Before they arrive, we send them an email with the details of the arrival time. And we want to make sure that the children from the same group arrive at the same time. So when they come through the main gate, we give them a little badge with their name, the bedroom number, and the name of the counselor who's in charge of that specific student. And we have we give them a map with the circuit. They have to go run, drop their luggage, and go and park the car. So the counselor is on the front of the bedroom uh, to greet them, collect the luggage, and leave them in the bedroom. They are not allowed to have the mobile phone throughout the, the, the camp, only twice a week, if they want, at a certain time, they will collect it from the counselor. If they, are, if they prefer to play and they don't want to phone home, they can go, it's not compulsory. With their mobile phone, it gives them a little peace of mind knowing that they can contact them at certain times. They also give us any medicines. They are not allowed to have medicines in their bedrooms. And the nurse, they are in charge of the medicines and also in charge of checking uh, about the specific diets. The camp counselor is keeping them together. And then when he has or she has all of them, then they have they start doing a tour around the camp, telling them exactly where everything is, showing them all about the rules and regulations, and doing a lot of games, ice-breaking games, introducing each other, and, and so on. And then they go for dinner. They have dinner. And after dinner, the whole camp, all of the campers, get to the, together and they do a, a welcome party where they're going to be telling them all the activities they're going to do and cheering them up and giving them a lot of expectations about their week at camp or two weeks at camp. And then at 11 o'clock, they go to bed. So that will be the first day. Partway through, we went to our cabins or our accommodation. They're probably a little different at Tamarit from Valclara, the Poblet. Can you describe them? Uh, is it, uh, are they bunk beds? Are there yes. how many children typically? All the bedrooms are wherever camp they go to, four or six. And they sleep in bunk beds and they have their own cupboard. And that's another little detail that my mom started many years ago. They have labels and they know exactly, I don't know, Maria's peg, Maria's shelf, Maria's draw, Maria's bed. So they know adults are not allowed to sleep with children, which means that children are going to be staying in rooms of four or six. And after those bedrooms, there's a bedroom for staff. And then three more bedrooms or two more bedrooms and then another bedroom with staff. In these bedrooms, we have the counselors and also the counselors who are in training, you know, extra people, extra hands, when, uh, especially with the very little ones, because we start at the age of five. Let's go to the kitchen or to, for some food. What are the times of meals in the day? They go for breakfast between nine and 9.45. We organize it by sittings. So at the back of each door in the bedrooms, they know if it's first sitting, second sitting, or third sitting. <laughs> All our services are in-house. We don't have catering, so we have our own uh, cooks, and it's all self-service. So they go, they collect the tray, they have the different options. So for example, two uh, starters, two main courses, and dessert. And we always have a salad, uh, a buffet, but our favorite is paella, the Spanish paella. Everybody loves paella and macaroni. Each counselor eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner with his or her own group. And we do that so that, because they are the ones who are their parents during the time that they're in the camp, 
and they're the ones who they need to know if they're eating properly, if they go to the toilet properly, all these questions, because these are the main questions the parents ask when they phone. They want to know about their safety and their health. But it's the Mediterranean diet. On a plate, they need to have half of it, vegetables, a quarter of protein and a quarter of carbohydrates. So this is all very well organized. Time for lunch is what time? Lunch is between 1.30 and 2.30, yeah, an hour. At three, we start the following activities. And then lunch, uh, dinner, sorry, is between 8.30 and 9.30 because we start again the late activities always between 9.30 and 11. They go to bed at 11. Between breakfast and lunch, it's a half an hour break. We always offer fruit. And also between uh, lunch and dinner, we have a little snack. Some days it's a sandwich, some days it's fruit or a little uh, cookie. Health services. Is there a, a clinic at each camp or do you keep a team of no. staff or are you connected to the hospital? How does that work? The person in the infirm is in charge of giving the medicines to each camper. And also, if a camper falls and scratches their knee or whatever, they can do the first aid. We have a suitcase in each of the camps, which is connected to an online pediatrician. They can take the pulse, they can take temperature, and everything is connected to the pediatrician on this computer. And they are the ones who tell us, uh, I think you should go to the hospital, maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes from any of the camps. We have services and also maybe three quarters of an hour, the main hospital. If they're European, they have the European uh, National Service, so they are covered with that. And if they are from outside of Europe, they have to bring their private insurance. You've mentioned uh, some English lessons. You've mentioned some uh, program activities. Uh, some of your camps are at the beach uh, or near the beach, and others are in the in the hills. So let's just run through a typical day and maybe some of the activities that children might do. So as we mentioned, they wake up between 8 and 8.30, go and have breakfast. When they finish breakfast, they go to their bedroom, they tidy up the whole camp. It's all around the Olympic Games. The Olympic team has students of all different ages. So when you go to class, you have your friends from your class because of level and age. In the bedroom, you have your other group of friends. And then the team, you have another group of friends. This helps everyone getting to know everyone in the camp. Anything that goes on at camp gives them points for their, for their Olympic team. So after breakfast, they go and tidy the bedroom. We have room inspection and they are given points. These points are going to go to their teams. For example, all the students are given a duty when they come. Okay. And this is to learn to be responsible, a duty that can be turning the lights on and off, collecting the uh, dirty clothes. Another duty can be watering the plants, putting the jars, the, the, the jugs of water on the tables at lunch, breakfast, and dinner. This also gives them points for their team. For example, in class, English lessons, they do activities or games, and they can also gain some points there. If they speak in English if outside the class, they get points. So after they're, they've done their English lessons, well, they do the first hour and a half with one teacher, and then have half an hour, and they go back to class, but with another teacher. And this exposes the, the students to different accents because we might have a teacher from Scotland or from Ireland. So when they finish their three hours of lessons in the morning, they go for lunch. And after lunch, they have maybe 20 minutes break. Um, they go up to their rooms, brush their teeth, tidy up or whatever they need. And they also have some time to spend around playing chess, tennis, badminton, they do a competition and they also add those points to the Olympic Games. Then after that, they start the last lesson, which is usually more relaxed. Theater, singing, preparing a video, interviewing. And then when they finish that fourth hour, yeah. that's when they go and get changed. And they spend an hour at the pool or the beach, depending on what camps they go to. It's just playtime, okay? Sunbathe, swim, whatever, maybe do some sand castles or whatever they want to do. And then they come back, get changed, and they start the activities, the afternoon activities. We have team sports, baseball, volleyball, 
football, basketball, all the team games, they do that for one hour and they go with their team, not with their uh, school group or bedroom group. <laughs> we know that some kids don't like sports. Uh, so that's why we only do one hour. The other hour is other type of activities like nature studies. There's the dance club that they love because they learn all these routines that they're going to be doing at night. So all these activities are done until just before dinner time. At eight o'clock, they go to their rooms, maybe change, because the best part is always the evening. The party that we do at night between 9.30 and 11. And this because sometimes the party involves also the dinner. For example, say they have rock and roll party. Okay, here we go. Uh, they do their own makeup and everything else. Because there are several competitions. They have the costume, the best costume, the best team costume. Then they have the dances, the rock and roll dance. And then we have the part where all the staff does the introduction to the actual theme party. So they do a, a little show. Then we have other parties, I don't know, the pirates, for example, and they have a treasure hunt or they have to run around and their treasure. So it's not all dancing or theater. And we have a specific song. Vamos a la cama que hay que descansar para que mañana podamos madrugar. This means let's go to bed because tomorrow we have to get up early. So everybody <laughs> sings that and they go to bed. The younger ones uh, might want to go to bed earlier. Say, for example, five, six, seven-year-old, they might be tired, they want to go earlier. The, the, the counselor will take them. They, they really fall asleep in two seconds. We don't have to invigilate that much. <laughs> no, I think I would be asleep as well. It sounds like a great <laughs> and busy day. As you look ahead for the next uh, 10 years or so in, in Spain uh, and in the life of English summer, wh what are some of the main challenges that you see ahead? Uh, the natality rate is going down. So we are thinking that in the future, there's going to be less children, which means that we're going to have to adapt to that. We're trying really hard to make sure that people understand that working at camps is going to help them in the future and it's going to give them values uh, and skills for their future job. I hate when people say, oh, you know, I'm not coming back in the summer because I'm doing a proper job. What do you mean a proper job? This is also a proper job. Uh, so you have your responsibilities, you, you have your timings, and, and you're getting paid for this. So we want the recognition of these jobs as, as important as any others. Youngsters, if mm. somebody's going to offer them five more euros, they're going to go to another place where we try and tell them we're not offering just a salary. We are offering also an emotional salary and we are offering much more than just this job. Bro. It's also very challenging. All the requirements from the government, uh, so much bureaucracy uh, yeah. in everything that I know that, for example, if somebody wants to start from zero, it's so complicated to get everything done. And also another thing, parenting is so different to what it was before. Many of our the parents who are bringing their kids have been campers before. Yes. And I don't understand why they're acting the way they act now, overprotecting their kids when they were kids and they did the camps. But they're like, oh, no, it's too long. One week is enough. And I go, <laughs> really? You were there for three weeks or four weeks? So, yeah, I think that is also another challenge. Well, your mother and father had a great vision, and you and Jordi and uh, Felipe have carried out that vision and really created a pretty special environment for kids yeah. in, the, in the Catalonia and beyond. What is your thanks to camp? I can say that thanks to camp, I've been able to be with my family every summer to be able to see your own kids as campers first, and then working at the camp and continuing our continuing with our legacy i think this is for me well it's one of those things i have to thank camp <laughs>
I haven't even asked you about uh, Castel. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, because I know that you even do some Castel in camp with Joanne. We and, do. Yeah. One of our uh, members of staff, Joanne, is, is, is involved in the Castells. And he suggested that we should include that. And we do team building with uh, adults also. With Castells, it's so important. And it's such yeah. a, a great metaphor you know for how right. people can work together to create something special and also to lift children up <laughs> to lift children up you're right now i know froggy is your mascot at uh, english yes. summer do you have frogs hopping all around how did that happen <laughs> <laughs> it's a very funny story. Uh, when we first started, uh, we had our initial F for Fleisch, our surname, on the T-shirt. There was an F. Then later on, we changed the F. We started thinking we need uh, we need to have something more, ch uh, you know, uh, adapted to children. So my eldest brother, who's really good at drawing, he drew a little boy holding a book, which was the English lessons, and a football. And that evolved. So we started saying we need a mascot, we need an animal or something that uh, identifies us. And my mother just went in the room and she said, when I think about England, she says, I remember when I was a child, the rainy days, we would put our Wellingtons on and go out and start jumping on the puddles. And there were a lot of frogs. <laughs> and we said, OK, we've got it. We're going to have a frog. So we had one of our members of staff who was very good at drawing. He drew the mascot. And since then, we've, we've changed it and given like a three dimension. And we now even have a costume. Yeah. We have Froggy running around and saying hello to the kids. Just adding to the fun and adding to the joy. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, you don't need to even write the name of the company. Everybody who sees the frog, they know it's English summer. I hope that it's not my last tour, my last visit. I oh. would like to come back and continue to watch mm -hmm. English summer grow and develop and, and lead so many kids into so many great experiences. Yeah. The doors are open anytime. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs>